AWS Loft Talks. So um, I'm going to take a little bit higher and um, speak to you about the Internet of Things, how it's being used, particularly for manufacturers. I'm a systems engineer by background, a product systems engineer, um, mostly hardware. I know enough software to be dangerous. Um, and uh, so we'll go in from there. I'm, I am from uh, Ayla Networks. So how many people here don't think the I, that IoT will be huge? Okay, good. Then we can pass through this slide. <laughs> right, I think you've seen this slide probably in every uh, session you've been at, that uh, IoT will be huge. Okay, uh, I do want to point out this last one here. It's not a market. It's more, and you've probably heard this a few times now too, right? It's more a loose connection of markets or a collection of loosely related markets. This is not a market. It's loosely means 50 billion things are coming online. If 50 billion things are coming online by 2020, right, then uh, how's that going to happen? Right, so one of the things we're looking at at Ayla is these are manufacturers that are going to be bringing these things on. Okay, and these are, and many times, in many cases, these are things that already exist, and they're going to be uh, converting them to be IoT connected, to be cloud connected. Don't be fooled. IoT is growing extremely rapidly, and a lot of it is being driven by manufacturers. Why is that, right? It's because previously people were doing sequential product cycles. Okay, they were building something, they were getting, you know, the marketing would go out there, collect the data, what do people like, what do people don't like, usually they'll get it wrong, um, and then they'll come out with a product, right, and, uh, or they'll come out with three products, right, and one will sell, they'll dump the other two, and they'll, they'll push on with that, that, that one that sells. And, you know, 18 months later, another three products come out, and then we'll, we'll go with the one that sells. So that was what we were doing before. Um, but we are moving into a, into a system where we're having constant uh, product iteration. So we get the product out in the field, and then we see what, um, what, how people are using it, and then we iterate it, okay? And this is happening faster and faster. Now, what, what do you do if you're a refrigerator manufacturer? Oh my God, right? People buy a refrigerator every 10 years, right? Maybe me, I buy it every 20 years. So what do you do, okay? So, and it's not, just, it's not just changing that, it's not just keeping up with the, what's the requirement, it's allowing new revenue, okay, L revenue streams. So we know revenue is, what's, uh, revenue is what drives things, right? So, so what's in here is what drives things. So if we can increase revenue for a company, provide new revenue stream because they can make money in different ways, um, that will get attention, right? That'll get attention at the upper echelons and the, when the product managers are going and competing for resources, the ones that bring, hey, I can give you an extra 30% revenue from this other avenue, they'll get that attention. What's driving this, okay? What's driving this? So if you're gonna buy something now, what do you do? Shut it out, what do you do? You're gonna buy some, hmm? You're gonna Okay, Rod's gonna Google, he's gonna buy something, he's gonna go and look at what people say about what he wants to buy on Google. Anybody else? Right? How many people do that? Right? So we look at the reviews. We have internet, right? Let's use it. So we go and buy, we, we go and look at the interviews and we see what people are thinking about what we buy. Okay, it's actually right now in sales. Um, once a person calls a company, calls a sales associate at a company, they've already done 70% of their research on the product they're going to buy. Okay, so sales is changing too. Sales people, what they, how they operate needs to change. Okay, this is what's driving the market. So if you're a manufacturer, right, and you're not monitoring what's happening here, you're gonna be out, right? So this is what um, John Chambers, in, in, this is what Ayla believes John Chambers was referring to when last year he was saying that by 2020, 40% of Fortune 500 companies will not exist, okay? If you are a refrigerator company and you're still building that refrigerator um, in a two-year life cycle and then you get it out and then you see what people like and then you build another one and two years later it's out, right? You might be in a little bit of trouble if you're not monitoring because if uh, Rob and I bu both buy a refrigerator and six months from now, a new feature comes out. Maybe the FDA has a way, you know, both our refrigerators can, can uh, uh, read barcodes. Don't laugh, okay? Okay, it's telling me my milk is old. Don't laugh, 
but maybe six months from now FDA says, hey, if it's reading barcodes anyway, we can tell you if the lettuce you're putting in there uh, in its backward tracking, you know, is not safe, right? And his refrigerator has the update and will do it. Mine doesn't. I'm keeping my refri refrigerator for 10 years. I'm going to be pretty pissed, right? I'm going to go on Google. I'm going to go on Amazon reviews, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be spewing a little bit here, okay? Because I spent all this money. This is what's happening, and it's not just Rob and myself. It's everybody here, okay? So even if you're a little bit shy, the internet allows you to be vocal. Okay, so this is what's uh, uh, this is what's causing it. Products are being made, but they're changing. Okay, they have to change at a fast rate, but some products just can't change. So what do you need? So what, do, what does a manufacturer need to be able to to do all this, right? So first they need um, security, right? I did hear a little bit of security being talked about. I heard a question from back there. I'll address a little bit as well. Um, we need to support um, security, but also privacy. Okay, we have to have an open architecture for leveraging partners. It's another thing um, that's been mentioned, and Chambers has mentioned this too, that the IoT is so huge that any one company that's trying to um, take all of it, they're going to fail, right? The only ones that are going to succeed are those people, those companies that are making their systems open, that are making their systems easy to use, and then work with partners. Okay, that way we can, we can partner together, and we can, we can solve the challenges that are going to come. We talked about APIs. APIs are extremely important, right? Making your APIs uh, open so that people can, uh, so partners can utilize this and you can expand the ecosystem, okay? Okay, so how do we address it at AILA? So what AILA does is um, we have a, a, a IoT platform for manufacturers. Now, I'm going to go a little bit off slide here a bit. So you're a manufacturer, okay? Position, imagine yourself a manufacturer. How many people here are makers? Okay, so a few makers here. So you're a maker, let's say, and you're, you're, you've, uh, you've got an idea. Ten years later, this idea is huge, okay? You're making, you're, you're making whatever that idea was. So you're going to be the best at making that thing, right? Or you're going to try to be the best at making that thing, okay? So that means that you don't have time to, to concentrate on, you know, what's the latest methodology for APIs. You don't have time to wonder about, you know, is it HomeKit? Or do I do I you know do I do Nest or what do I do right? Because you're making your thing, you're concentrating on your thing, and this new you know whiz bang thing comes around cloud. Oh my God, right? Now I need developers on cloud, right? No, I want to build my thing. So what you need to do is, if you're doing a platform, okay, if you're concentrating on a market, what does that market need? So that market's concentrating on creating products and keeping those products up to date, right? So they don't need um, they don't want to learn about new technologies, okay? So what we do is there's three pieces that we provide. We provide connectivity, okay? Now, we're a software-only company, so how do we provide connectivity? So, conne of course, if you've got a thing and you're going to do IoT and have data in the cloud, you need to connect it. So we work with partners. Okay, there's that partner thing again. Okay, very important. So we work with partners to put our agent into, the, into their modules. So we'll work with Broadcom, we work with Qualcomm, we work with Marvell, right? Um, the leaders that are in, in connectivity, right? And right now we're in IP. So uh, we work with them and we'll take their module. So you can buy a Broadcom serial to Wi-Fi module from Broadcom, okay? Or from their vendor, Murata, or USI. And you can also buy a module from Broadcom, which is a serial to cloud module. Okay, so all you need is a serial port. Okay, don't need to know about the, uh, the connectivity piece. We've put that into the device. Okay, and we're taking care of uh, commissioning. So the end user, um, we have various ways for the product to commission. Now this is something else. You need to make that very easy, right? So how many engineers in the audience here? How many tech people are in the audience? Okay, I think everybody's arms are going to go up, right? So we're talking to ourselves here, right? Come on. You know, we, we, can, we can put on a Wemo into our house and, and, and it'll work, right? We can put a Foscam in our house and it'll probably work. It'll, you know, it'll take a few hours, but it'll work, right? But, you know, if you give that to grandma, to your grandma, and, you know, um, will she be able to do it, okay? So, or, you know, will she have to give it to your, your you know, four-year-old? And, your, of course, your four-year-old would be able to do it for sure. <laughs> But the point is not to give you, have to give it to your four-year-old, right? So you need to build all those into that module so the manufacturer doesn't have to worry about it, right? Because he doesn't know or she doesn't know, right? Okay, 
So now we've got this part. It's, uh, you know, it allows their thing to connect up to the cloud. Now we've got cloud. So people talk about SDKs for cloud. Oh my god, an SDK? No, I'm making a refrigerator. Come on. You know, how many SDKs does my refrigerator need? OK, well, maybe the host processor that's in there, right? But so on the cloud, what we do is we give you a dashboard. You open up the dashboard, right? And you define the data that you're going to send up. You virtualize your product. OK, if you have a refrigerator, how many things is, are you going to send up on the refrigerator? OK, I'm going to send up uh, 50 things, right? And one of those is a barcode. OK, and I'm going to get five things back from the refrigerator. You can make your own choice. So if there's five refrigerator manufacturers here, they'll each define them differently. Right? So it's not schema-based, it's, uh, it's data-centric, and so they can define it. It's completely flexible. Okay? And then what do we do? Okay, so if you're building a thing, you have a host processor. And that host processor, so you have an SDK with it and an IDE. Okay, so we give you a library so that you import that into, your, um, into the SDK that you're already using for your uh, host processor. We also give you a library here so that um, you can write mo native mobile apps for Android or iOS to access this virtualized data of that product, right? And this is staying coherent, okay? Any changes that are occurring here are being passed to the device and, uh, and uh, vice versa, okay? So now, we're, now we enable this manufacturer to get their um, thing connected to the cloud. This is the, the dashboard to virtualize the, the product. So this is actually an example uh, Link Hotel, Caesars Hotel, uh, lent us a room during CES this year, and we fully automated that, right? So um, basically what happens is you can, um, via, via an app, you can book a room, and then when you go to the room, you bar barcode scan it. It authenticates, yeah, this is you, and it allows you to unlock the door and go in. So this was the dashboard to, uh, that we used for that. Okay, so what are things you need to make that platform effective? Okay, there's a few things, but I'm, I listed four here. Okay, one is to the cost to develop and launch. Again, so you're, you're talking about companies that are making refrigerators, okay? Or companies, and I, I, so I'm not going to bug the refrigerator guys anymore, okay? We talked about lights earlier, okay? So new incumbents in the lighting industry. So they want, they've got a great new idea for a light, okay? Um, whatever. I mean, we can't even, th how many people here have a crystal ball? Okay, oh, we got one, one. <laughs> I'll talk to you after. <laughs> All right, so... You know, there's new products coming out, right? And that's why we're here. You guys have lots of great ideas. You're, you know, you're collecting data. You're going to come out with some great ideas, right? Things that we haven't even thought about. If it's going to be 50 billion things, trust me, there's going to be things coming that we haven't even thought about, okay? And so it's got to be uh, cost-effective to develop. But we also got to get our time. Um, we got to uh, reduce our time to market, right? So how fast does it get out there? The unfortunate thing is we've got so many people. If you've got a great idea, 50 other people have your, great, have your great idea, okay? The guys that are gonna win are the people that act on that idea and are able to act on it quickly, okay? So you gotta have a platform that can get you quickly. Big data capabilities, what's the whole point of this? Is the point of this so that you know, I can turn my light on from my office or turn my air conditioner on from my office when I leave, right? No, it's not, that's remote control, that is not IoT, okay? The point of this and the real uh, concentration why manufacturers are interested is they're now able to learn. How many people fill in that little card you get when you buy something? What's your name? What's your address? What's your firstborn's name, right? Um, you know, that goes into the file. But now, you don't have to, you know, as a manufacturer, you're going to get that data, right? So, you know, you potentially know, and you might, for privacy reasons, have to allow people to opt out, uh, potentially know how people are using your product. Right, so that's the big data. The big, the, the big data part of that is by knowing how people are going to use your product. If you put, you know, as engineers, everything we put into parts are, are, are really good. So we're going to put 10 really good features into our product. But oh my god, oh, six of those features are not going to be used. I'm sorry. Okay, but now you can find out which six those are. Okay, and so you can concentrate on those other four. That's great, but I've still got room from those six. Why can't I change it? Okay, we had a question earlier um, on what's happening with cryptology and the changes, and what are people doing in IoT to address that? Okay, we don't know what's going to change. No one here said they had a crystal ball, except that gentleman there. All right, and he's expensive. Trust me. Okay, so as cryptology changes, as we learn from what people are using our product, we have to be able to change that product. Remember we said that refrigerator in six months is going to change? Nobody has a crystal ball. We don't know how it's going to change. 
So we have to have OTA, we have to, be have to allow the code to be flexible enough that we can change it. We can change its representation in the cloud, it's a virtualization, we can OTA it, and it suddenly got a new, uh, you know, a new personality. How many Trekkies in the audience? None? Oh my god. All right, a couple. So Star Trek's this show, all right, where we go. <laughs> Have you ever noticed the Trekkies that are in the audience? This might be a very narrow audience here. The, in the audience, whenever the Klingons attack, anybody attacks the, uh, the Enterprise, whichever version it is, they always move, you know, energy from life support to shields. Okay. There were software developers here. How many software developers here in building something that's going to be housing people will think to, be, to turn off the life support? How many of you would have done that, would have thought about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to build a spaceship, right? It's in space, okay? There's no air. But we can turn off the air with this just button. Let's do it, right? You might actually be fired for doing that. Okay, so somebody somewhere, and this was after the 50 billion parts were... Uh, in the field, right? Reprogram that enterprise to be able to shut off life support for a small period of time so that we can put their shields up. Because if we get hit by a torpedo, we don't need life support, all right? So that's the thing. We don't have a crystal ball, except this gentleman, but he's very expensive, right? So if you can't afford to pay him, you need to make the systems flexible so that we can change it. That's what we mean about this. And that's what the manufacturers are starting to um, realize. OK, KPIs. Ugh. All right, so KPIs, yes, cost, right? We gotta keep the cost down. Uh, um, cost is one of these fun, funny things. If people are coming into the market and they know, you know, they know it's part of the business, they gotta do this. But again, if you are this, uh, I'm gonna beat them up again, this refrigerator manufacturer, right? Damn, you, I need to spend money on this? Okay, so you gotta keep that cost down to develop. So. The time to market we talked about, big data we talked about, flexibility we talked about. I don't need to go over this uh, again. Actually, the cost part is a little bit easy. Okay, in the past, it may have been 25 bucks, if you were buying one, to get that module, to get Wi-Fi. Okay, so product manufacturers had to look at, okay, it's gonna cost me this amount of money and I'm gonna get you know, convenience, which is internet connectivity. Okay, now it's not that. Now, you're gonna spend some piece of money for this connectivity module, but you're getting return. So if you're a big <coughs> agricultural company and you can increase the yield on your property by, you know, 2%, you know, are you gonna spend, I don't know, five bucks a sensor, right? So a little bit of CapEx, but I'm getting 2% return, right? So if I'm making uh, millions of dollars off of that field, uh, per year, then that 2% is uh, going to offset. So the key here is, the key takeaways are, IoT is going to be huge. It's going to be huge because it's actually helping manufacturers. It's helping them make more money. It's helping them know what their actual users are, um, how they're using their product. And then they're gonna, it's, it's going to help them take that data and make that, da make that product more effective for the end user or uh, more efficient at what it's doing, right? So in some cases, Maybe it's a train. Um, okay, maybe I'll make life a little bit easier for the conductor, but I may want to know when uh, a couple of bearings are going to wear out, and so I can replace it next time that's in in the uh, um, in the hangar, if you will, right? Um, so that it's not down. So I'm increasing again, though I'm increasing efficiency. I'm getting more revenue uh, for my dollar. So uh, and then for the developers, we've got to keep it flexible, right? Because we don't know. We don't know, and the really evil thing about this, we don't even know what we don't know. Oh my God, all right? So we gotta be really flexible. And I heard Rob, again, say something really interesting, um, which was, if you're gonna build something, you know, send all of its capability up and let it be taken care of somewhere else, right? Because if we send all the ability up, then we can change things, right? Then we can move life support, you know, off for a little bit and, and, and move it over to shields. So that's, uh, that's, that's the key. You don't know what you don't know, and, and uh, keep that in mind. AWS Loft Talks.